Have you been considering getting into buying a battery to run your various different appliances you have in your house, but you don't really know which one would be the best budget battery to pick? I've seen this question time and time again. What can you run from just a standalone battery. I hope in this video that I can explain to you my experience with owning this Red Odeo 12 volt 100 amp hour battery. I've had it for about a month now and I'm still looking to improve this system to have like an inverter and such, but actually I've been using it just as a DC system for now. So I've connected it up to some 210 watt panels on my roof. That's running into a MPPT charge controller and then that's charging the battery. I thought in this video that we will also look at how does the battery help in my daily life like what do I use it for how is it helpful to me and how can it be helpful to you I thought we'd be talking a little bit about the battery specifications now you can get other batteries from them which have slightly different features which I wanted to discuss about and just generally talking about its performance and more specifically I wanted to talk about the discharge and the charging conditions that's something that we need to discuss some real life examples so what, I, what do I mean by real life examples I mean what can you run off this thing even without an inverter actually which is a good question definitely please subscribe over 90 percent of my viewers are not actually subscribed to the channel so please subscribe please hit the subscribe button that helps the channel the, the thing is what, what we have to understand is that when we're using a lot of appliances we've got to use ac power that's not necessary all the time because actually a lot of devices I, i'll take for example my computer i've got a macbook pro it's an old 15 inch computer but it works still really well i think it's like nine years old it runs off DC power. So the weird thing is that a lot of setups, people are basically taking a DC battery, then they use an AC inverter, and then they plug in their wall adapter for their MacBook, for example, or their any computer, and then they're converting that back into DC. Can you see how that's a very inefficient way to send the power over to your device? What you can do instead is just plug your device directly via the DC power. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do it. The cheapest way by far is to get this little adapter. So I've got this little adapter on my battery. You use these O-ring terminals and you, you place it on the tops of, of, of the positive to the positive, negative to the negative terminals. Make sure you try and find one with a fuse. I've generally seen that that's recommended. You can protect your devices when you have a fuse. Basically, you can then use the DC car plug port at, to run anything that uses 12 volt power. You don't need to use a car adapter. If you want, you could use an XT60 plug. You could use a barrel plug. Some devices that I found on the web, which are floating around, are like DC control hub boxes. You can use all sorts of different D DC devices. For example, you can run DC lights, so you can run a um, LED strip. I use that personally. It works really well. You've got USB ports if you use the right ones as well. One of the main things that you, I think we see a lot on the internet is people looking about running something as simple as a fridge. So I think this is the most practical use case. Now I've actually got a little 12 volt fridge, which I got from Vevor over on AliExpress. Basically, I what I do occasionally is I'll plug the fridge directly into the car plug port, and then I can run the fridge directly off a 1200 watt hour battery. Now, if we do some basic math, the eco mode function on my fridge takes about 25 to 28 watts of power. And the maximum mode when you go like below minus, if you bring it down to minus 20 degrees Celsius, it will use more power. So it'll use something like 45 watts or something like that continuously. And you can choose between those functions. Also, which I, what I like about on this fridge is that you've got a little USB port. So you can actually, if you wanted to, you could plug this, this specific fridge, you could plug it into the battery and it'll give you a USB port, which is quite funny. Basically, if you run the numbers, conservative estimates, I would as estimate that you can run this fridge on maximum mode, 45 watts for 24 hours. Now there could be some conversion losses, but I'm pretty sure that it's gonna run for pretty much 24 hours till the battery will be depleted. Um, now, if you run it on eco mode, it's gonna run for possibly 39 to 46 hours, which is insane. Uh, which means you could basically, if you had a cloudy day, no sunlight coming in, you can basically run your 12 volt fridge off this battery 
for probably like two days, which is insane. If you run stuff from an AC inverter, that will change the numbers a bit because there's some conversion losses when you go from DC to AC. 2000 watt inverter that we're going to be reviewing soon, so definitely stay subscribed for that. But I just wanted to talk about the various different ways that you can use the power coming from this battery to run all sorts of different 12 volt appliances. And personally, that helps me a lot with running stuff like the fridge, and I can run it off there pretty much indefinitely, like as long as I've got like solar power. And that's the next thing is that the fact that if you connect this to a solar powered system, which again, I have a full video detailing how you do that, it's definitely worth considering for the money. There are things, some things to consider if you're interested in getting the exact same battery that I've got here and I'm demonstrating. This battery doesn't come with any cutoff switch for when you go below zero degrees Celsius. Now, there is this general consensus that you should try not to charge a battery when you're at like minus five degrees Celsius. Now, I think generally what I've found and researched is that these batteries are actually slightly insulated. So as long as you have the battery above the ground, so you have it like not sitting on a cement floor, for example, in a shed, as long as you have it on like a wooden surface or maybe even like a carpet or something like that, the battery is also insulated itself because it's plastic, it's not metal. And I've seen some teardowns where people take apart this battery and there's actually some foam inside as well. Now that I've decided to just put just for some extra protection, I put some foam around it to give it even more protection during the winter time. In my area, I'm at around 300 meters above sea level, French Pyrenees roughly. Generally speaking, my temperatures are not I mean, we sometimes we get like one week or two weeks in January. So I think it's like minus three, five degrees Celsius. Uh, but that's outside. Now, inside a building, it won't reach the same temperature because the building is literally slightly insulated. Depends how insulated your cabin or your van or your car is. That will be a big deciding factor. But generally speaking, you, I wouldn't really worry about that too much unless you're like living in the mountains or you're living in like Norway. You'll definitely want to have a look at maybe the cold protection feature or the self-heating batteries. Now, they do actually sell those on Red Odeo, so you can have a look at those links below. Uh, there's a bunch of affiliate links down below which support the channel, so if you're interested in buying a battery like this, with your purchase, I will be getting a small cut of that so that that'll help support the channel for future videos. Personally, I wouldn't really worry about the discharge and the charging conditions in temperatures like around 5 degrees. It's going to be fine. Now, even on my MPPT charge controller, there's a temperature gauge on there, and it says it's 11 degrees batteries actually just normally as they're currently idle they do give off a small amount of heat and actually when you start using them they even give off slightly more it's not a lot it's nothing to be concerned about but it does give enough that i would cons i would say that generally most of us as long as you're using the battery in an insulated environment and it's not sitting on the cement floor of your cabin or your shed or whatever I, d I wouldn't really worry about the fact that it's going to go below zero degrees. Now, if you are really concerned and you know that you're going to get like minus 10, minus 20 degrees Celsius, then have a look at the self-heating batteries. They have self-heating ones for a lot of YouTubers, a lot of different reviewers, you know, big names like Will Prowse, DIY Solar. They've actually done teardowns and they've done uh, capacity tests, which has actually led me to also want to buy a, I've actually purchased, I've, I've got in the mail battery capacity tester in the mail. And that way I can actually do my own tests in the future for future batteries. Cause I think it's definitely worth having. The, the Red Odeo claim that it's beyond its rated capacity by 100 101 amps or 105 amps sometimes and i've seen loads of other reviews like several different reviews where people have tested the battery capacity and it really does give slightly over 100 amp hours which is absolutely fantastic so you're going to get the 1200 watt hour rating which is really really good also keep in mind these batteries can be put into parallel or series you can connect these batteries together there are also batteries that they offer which are bigger capacities of this that they do offer i think i believe up to 300 amp hours which is really fantastic and they also do batteries for starting golf carts or for running boats for example now one of the features that i like to use this battery for is i like to charge up my various other solar generators so when i've got not a lot of power on a cloudy day which definitely does happen around here especially in winter so what i do is i take that that fully charged battery and i send that power over to my solar generators so i've got for example my fossibot f800 that is a 
about it's roughly a 500 watt hour battery i then connect that up and i can charge up that battery like i would if i was getting full sun and then i can also charge up my smaller one which is the vevor battery which is just just, just under 300 watt hours i think these days it's probably like 200 50 these days and then i've got another smaller one that i use for powering some lights and powering some smaller devices like my phone i think it's a very affordable battery you get a five-year warranty as long as you sign up at the the moment that you've received your item you do get a five-year warranty with red audio i found that their support over the, the emails have been very very prompt it's been very very quick something to keep in mind is that you can now order the battery in different locations around the world so you've now got france and spain which are now options i think i've now seen also Ukraine is an option. They sell in Japan, the United States, Germany, which is what they've been doing for a while, and Canada. So they do actually ship and operate in different countries. So just have a look at that as well. Please like the video if you found this to be helpful. If you need any more information, I'll try and help you in the comments down below. Stay subscribed because I will be doing a long-term review on this battery and I will be testing it out. And hopefully that gives you an idea of the various different uses that you can use this battery for. That's it. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in another video.